Hi everyone, uh, this video is about Ryuichi Sakamoto, uh, the extraordinary Japanese composer, musician, artist, actor who passed away recently. And I was uh, working today and listening to all his music and, and I still can't get over that he's no longer with us. Um, I actually didn't know much about Ryuichi Sakamoto. I ne had never heard of him until 1983 when I went to see the movie Merry Christmas Mr. Lawrence. It was a World War II movie and was showing at a, an art house uh, theater. So he acts in it along with David Bowie and the British uh, actor Tom Conti. So uh, Ryuichi Sakamoto did the soundtrack for that film and I remember just sitting in the theater being so blown away by the music, you know, the score for the whole movie because it just felt like it was part of the film, an integral part of the film. So ever since I saw that movie and discovered uh, his his music, I've been a huge fan of his since. And um, I just wanted to share uh, this opportunity and privilege that I had uh, meeting him uh, way back in 1996. So it was quite a long time ago. So I was working overseas and I had the chance to interview him while he was uh, in Hong Kong uh, on a big uh, publicity and concert tour around Asia to promote his album called 1996. And basically that album features all his most popular uh, film scores. And they were basically stripped back, very stripped back versions. Uh, it was basically him on the piano accompanied by a cellist and a violinist. So I want to share with you this report, uh, and I hope that it's a worthy tribute uh, in the memory of Ryuchi Sakamoto. It's a major player in a feature film, and it's just as integral as the actors themselves. It's a movie soundtrack, and for one composer, it's catapulted him to the top of the most wanted list for producing film scores. An accomplished musician, Ryuchi Sakamoto reached international stardom in 1983 with his first film soundtrack, Merry Christmas, Mr. Lawrence. Do you think that you've received much more exposure because you've been able to do scores for, for movies? Physically, um, writing scores is difficult. I mean, hard, you know, conditions are much harder, but somehow, you know, writing some sort of uh, classical or symphonic music is a little easier than writing poppy songs. <laughs> Classically trained Sakamoto hasn't had problems, though, overcoming tough conditions. In 1987, film director Bernardo Bertolucci recruited Sakamoto to compose the score for The Last Emperor, which won him a string of awards, from an Oscar to a Grammy. But the 44-year-old admits it was his work for Bertolucci's Little Buddha that became the most formidable. Uh, there's always mathematical calculation going on between mu music time and video I mean film time I mean ra rates are different if I can give the director my music before um, he shoots uh, my job is much much easier or if I can get the final movie before I start writing music it will be much easier. Uh, the problem I always have is, as I'm writing music, the director is always changing the film. So, you know, it's two things going on at the same time. So I have to get the new edit, new lengths, um, ev almost every day, and changing, changing. So even I have written this piece, yesterday. So the mood is okay, the direction is okay, the orchestration is okay, but the length is different today. So I have to rewrite the piece again. 
Sakamoto had to rewrite the Little Buddha score four times before Bertolucci was satisfied. But the composer takes the experience in stride, saving his second rewrite and naming the song and a solo album, Sweet Revenge. And in the course of composing eight soundtracks, Sakamoto has been able to step in front of the cameras, appearing in Merry Christmas, Mr. Lawrence and The Last Emperor. What was acting like for you? Was it tough? <coughs> um, I found that acting is not very creative. Really? <laughs> um, you know, well, because I have just a few experiences. Yeah, it's truly, you know, actors are dolls, you know, puppets, you know. Um, more physically, uh, you have to wait for a long time on the set with makeup on. Do you feel so you, you have to, you always have to do something? Like you always have to be in motion? Do you, are you that type? And you can't just sit around <laughs> Exactly, you know, I can't, I can't wait. I can't, you know, be sitting on the set for like six hours you know, and doing my job only one hour, that's it. You know, it's just, um, it's not fun. <laughs> Sakamoto has come full circle, starting his career as a member of the Yellow Magic Orchestra, which was the precursor to the techno era. Now he's adopting a minimalist approach. His latest album, 1996, is testament to that. Sakamoto's Trio World Tour is basically a no-frills show, with cellist Jacques Morlenbaum and violinist Everton Nelson joining him on stage. The tour has taken the trio to Singapore, Taiwan, and Beijing. Were the mainlanders really into your music? In the beginning of the show, uh, they were, they were, they seemed, they were a little puzzled how to react. Um, you know, probably they were wondering, you know, could we dance? Could we stand? Or could we, you know, applause? whatever um but you know the the end of the show you know, they stood up you know i got standing ovation um lots of applause um actually uh, local chinese people told me that you know they saw people did the standing ovation the first time as part of his tour, Sakamoto stopped off in Hong Kong for one performance. But he's not too worried about exposure for his music. Well, I cannot live without the internet nowadays. You know, I've been deeply into it. How deeply? <laughs> How deeply? Well, I even formed a company in Japan um, related to um, any Mm, parts of the internet like a soft software or you know we are even doing a, as a provider internet provider you know, little things <laughs> so you have you're reaching a much uh, bigger audience really exactly internet. you know through the internet yes if i was a teen now like 17 you know i wouldn't become a musician but you know i would become maybe an communication technology engineer or something, or maybe a um, software programmer. Following his performance in Hong Kong, Sakamoto plans to do nearly 20 shows in Japan before heading back to New York City, a place he calls home. I'm still very egomaniac, and uh, uh, I'm still inter interested in myself. Um, but um, in these years, like four or five years, I mean, I'm getting to think for other people. I'm getting more interested in uh, producing, I mean, helping uh, especially younger people. Uh, I'm, for instance, my, I'm very interested in Chinese young people's music. Um, I would love to help them. So I'd love to spend you know, sometime, like a, a month, two months, 
um, exploring you know, the whole China, and not only Beijing, but you know, some other cities or even some small tribes. It is very difficult to define myself, you know, uh, categorize myself. And like his aspirations, his music has no boundaries.